Welcome. I hope you enjoy this session. Hi, Lena. Okay. Um, hi, PB Brewer. Martin. I'm not sure what the name is, but I've said the whole name. Hi, guys. Okay, excited. Let's. I'm going to flip my camera over and then uh, I'll walk you through all my products that I'm using. Keep in mind, uh, if you're unsure of the products I'm using or where to find them, I have description. Uh, I have links in the description below. So just check the description. Once the live um, goes live or once the live is done, I'll make sure to kind of uh, put in uh, exactly what I've been using because right now it's just the basic template uh, text that you see, but the links are there in the description. So check it out if you want to check the supplies. All right, flipping. Uh, let's do this. All right. So uh, as most of you know, I always use the um, Canon. Can no, not Canon. Wow. Canson. I'm thinking too much about my camera, guys. The Canson watercolor paper, that's what I'm using. Uh, this is a 9 by 12 sheet of paper. And let me just make sure that you can see more of the view on my table. So I'll move this over. Hold on. Again, we've got this weird... There we go, that's better. Uh, I'll have my colors here so you can see that. I'm also gonna make sure my palette is here. Um, and for my brushes and my paper towel, I'm gonna slide that in here as well so it's close by, as I mentioned. I am using my Filbert number four, the Mop number one, and the um, Silver Black Velvet number four as well. So I'm just going to keep them handy on the side. For my colors, I am using Carmen Red Ochre because I feel like they complement each other quite well. Um, sepia. And I'm going to have my green handy. And these are St. Petersburg White Knights in case you're wondering which colors these are. Um, so I'm just going to put these aside and then for the uh, radiant line, I'm going to do a purpley color to go with this. And so for that, I'm just going to be mixing um, some of the cherry with my violet to get like a jewel tone mixture because the violet right now as is, is quite, I think harsh looking in my opinion so I want something a little softer and closer to the tone that complements the Carmen so I'm just going to mix these two to get that um, so putting that on the side and uh, yeah you know what let's not put it on the side let's mix it up so you guys can see that happening so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to get some of my cherry I'm going to mix it right in the middle so it doesn't flow from the top down. And we're going to use this to highlight um, areas in our painting to give us that nice pop of color. All right. And welcome, Joanne. No worries. We are just getting started. If you guys ever just come in between, like in the middle of a session, that's totally fine. It's nice that YouTube uh, saves the video and you're able to always watch it on replay later. Oops, just knocked over a bottle. So now I'm going to mix this so you can see what that looks like. But I'm going to mix it with, because you know I don't like to waste, uh, waste paint. So I'm just going to mix it with the number 8 Princeton. And I think I'll use this to kind of apply any color if needed. Maybe. Let's just see how that works out. Maybe I'll end up using the Filibert. I'll let you guys know for sure either way. I'm going to keep that water there so you can see me dipping as I... So you can see how bright that color is right away. And it looks super purpley. If I add a little more of that cherry in it, I think it might get a little redder. So let's uh, 
Let us try it. Although I feel like it doesn't really need more, but I don't want it to be... I want the color to be just right, guys, so just put that one dot in there. And then just mix it in. All right, and I'm going to leave it as is. And just put my brush to the side. Ring it out first. I'm just going to ring it out and then put it to the side. Um, and then I'm going to use the, um, let's use the mop brush to mix in some of our other colors. So I'm going to mix in the red ochre. And I'm just going to get some color on here. It's like this nice reddish kind of, or maybe more of like an orangey brown, I think. I would describe this as and I think it'll be nice for even like if you're doing any florals that are supposed to be light or like nude colored florals I think this would be pretty so I'm going to leave that here it's very very light as you can see there's like more water less color in my mixture and then I'm just washing off my brush and we're going to get in some of the Carmen. Thanks, Deborah. This bracelet was a gift to myself for my birthday last year. <laughs> I like giving myself bracelets, guys. And this is from Swarovski as well. I absolutely love the colors because I just felt it's what I kind of tend to paint with often so this is a Carmen and I love how this combo looks already look at that so we got like this nice orangey hue which would be our muted hue we've got this nice deep purple and then we have like this nice pinky red so I can't wait to see what we end up doing so I'm just gonna make sure I get all the color off my brush before I wash it off and put it down and now we're gonna get started so before we get started let me just explain to you if you've not watched the two videos let me just explain to you how we're going to be going about doing this so the whole point of this is we're doing abstract florals trying to use color to make the artwork bright and pop but we're also going to use a lot of white space to help enhance our florals and that's what's going to make it look abstract. So a lot of negative. So I think I described these florals as negative space florals in my video. So the whole point of negative space, meaning we're not going to be painting uh, everything in. So we're going to start off with doing just highlights. So for instance, uh, I think I will start off with doing a rose or two roses. So you can see what I mean by negative space florals. So we'll start off with using the mop brush and I am going to add uh, I'm going to use the um, just taking off extra extra water so that the tip is semi pointed like this as you can see and I'm going to use the uh, let me just make sure that the screen is good yeah I'm going to get some of my color that I mixed which is the red ochre and I'm just dipping the tip in water so that the color mixes throughout the belly of the brush, not just at the tip. So when I actually go and lay it down, I get a soft light hue, but it's consistent throughout. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with doing the center of the flower. And um, let me just, we're going to start off by doing the inner center of the floor, uh, the rose. And let's just assume that it's pointing up this way. So for the inner center, I'm literally just doing like one of the bigger, a bigger stroke like this, and I'm just going to do some tinier strokes below it. And then leave that as is. I'm dipping the tip of my brush in water, and I'm going to do the outer stroke for the other side of the floral. And I hope I do a good job of explaining what I'm trying to do and then I'm just doing lighter strokes around it because this is a very loose floral 
So just assume we're doing like a little cup. All right, and then we're going, we're doing another very loose stroke or strokes rather, and it's super light as you can see. And then I'm gonna get a little bit more of that color, add it to the tips here and there so that we get that nice dark to light hue. Maybe even like enhance in the color there. And then I'm going to get a little bit of water to create my other stroke here. So you can already see like, it's like a very slight hint of a floral, but we're not doing a lot of detail happening in here. And then I'm just gonna add a couple of light strokes at the top to kind of indicate background petals. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in some of this purple. So I'm getting some of the purple in my number eight, and I'm just gonna add a couple of strokes in the areas where it is already damp, and I want it to flare. And so I'm just kind of going randomly and just adding a little bit of this in the areas where I had just laid down some water. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more towards the center There we go. And I just want the color to kind of do its thing and flare, flare up by itself. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get some of the ochre directly from here. And I want to go in and add a couple of extra strokes to make it slightly darker where we, where we have already laid down color. And I want this to blend in with what we've just laid down, which is the... Um, the radiant color. So getting some water because I want the outer edges to be a lot more, uh, what's the word, softer in hues. So I'm just gonna add a thing of water over here, but I think this got a little bit too dark, that's okay. And we'll just leave it that way. And we can always extend and do another floral down here and then the color can seep in, so that's not a big issue. I've washed off all my color right now from this brush and I'm just going to go in here and just move the color around so that it doesn't because for me it's it's gotten a little bit out of control so I'm just giving my color some direction so I'm pu pushing it down to the center and just making sure that it will dry up properly and nicely with good placement. All right so then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some more of that color and just mix it here so it's ready. Let's do some of the red this time. So now I'm going to get some of the carmine. And in fact, you know what? I'm not going to use uh, the mop brush. I'm going to use the filbert this time. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> get some of the carmine. And we're going to do the same thing and this time we'll do it on this side uh, and let's like I said let's let's touch this angle here and I'm just gonna lay down one stroke whoa we got that nice flare love it I'm gonna take off some of the water because it's a little bit too much water I'm gonna dip my brush into the color palette so I can get some color directly from there so it's brighter and then I just want to do, we'll do the cup facing downward in this direction, just FYI. So pressing downward this way, then dipping the tip of my brush again. I'm going to do another stroke beside it to give it that nice double thicker look happening. And then I'm just going to get some water off the brush, get some color on the brush, and I'm just adding additional lines over here to indicate like this is the center of the floral. Again, very loose guys, almost abstract. And then dipping the tip of my brush in water again, I am going to add a 
couple of other strokes over here on this end and I want it to be like this like give it some gap let the colors flow if it's not looking like a flower for you don't worry but let the let the colors speak for the whole artwork I guess is what I'm trying to say um, and then learn when to just like let your hand get off the page that takes some time it's easier said than done trust me and I'm just adding so these are the the petals that kind of fan out and then I'm just going to use my number four and I am going to get um, some of the purple that we have in fact maybe even mix it with some of that that we have happening the uh, pink carmine and I'm just going to add it to the center down here not center sorry this is the base of the cup flower that we have happening here so I just want to add it down this way so that it kind of touches these petals that are fanning out and I want there to be that blend and I want it to be like a shock of purple going into that pink carmine that we have happening and then maybe even add a little bit of that to the edges of these. So it gives you that nice blend within the colors that we've used. And I just took off all the color and with just water I'm kind of giving this petal a little bit more shape and just moving the color to the edge. So that it dries with a smooth blend as opposed to just like a jar jarry edge I guess and just adding a couple of strokes here and moving this color as well I love how that pink looks with that purple it's just stunning all right then uh, I'm going to go back with my filbert and I am just going to add a couple of strokes on the back end here so it just looks like it's the it's uh, petals in the background almost and I want that to be a very light version of the color we've laid down so I'm gonna get some of that pink and just make sure because the filbert has like holds a lot of water make sure you're not you don't have a lot of water on here when you're doing this so keep that paper towel handy and then just have it ever so lightly on the sides and then you have that that's it that's all I'm gonna do for these we can go back later on and just enhance the centers a bit more but typically this is the loose florals with abstract looking strokes and colors to kind of enhance it and make it look a certain way so now I'm going to go ahead and use some of the sepia that we have and using the number four, I'm going to try and get some of the um, sepia directly from here. And let's start some leaves happening. So I'm going to start. I'll do one like happening over here. Now this is still damp and I was hoping that it would give me a nice flare of color. But the stroke, I guess, is too... Um, it's too thin so I'm just gonna extend that there we go and see this so now I'm gonna get a nice show of pink when I do this blending into my sepia and I love that because look at that you can see the pink blending into this like dark hue so I just dipped, dipped the tip of my brush in water and I'm going to do a second stroke just like that because again we're just doing we're doing a whole bunch of random strokes intentionally to create what looks like leaves right and we're not looking for perfection so you can see the tip of this leaf is not perfect for me but that's the style of the painting we're doing so just go with it and I feel like even if you're a beginner at this point this is something you would enjoy doing because you're exploring the whole idea of being 
loose with your style of painting. You're not looking for perfectionism. You're not trying to copy. Everyone's going to get a different result, guys. And that's, that's what makes this piece unique. So uh, now there's, there's this pink here and I'm so tempted to just like take my brush and do a stroke and get some of that pink out. I think I will do it. Love it. Although it didn't quite give me uh, the look I was looking for, but that's okay. So I'm just doing like hints of what looked like an extension of the leaf that we have coming out from the stem. And now it's like from pink all the way to like sepia. And I like how that is flowing. So I'm going to use some of that sepia again. And this time I'll do a stroke over here on this end because again, my pink is still quite damp in this area. So I want to take advantage of that. And my whole idea is I want to get that flow of color. There we go. And let's see, I think I'll do one on this side too. And then let's just leave this for now. And I'll get some of this color and let's go over here. By now, I think most of this is dried up but let's see if we can catch let's see if we can no you know what we're gonna cheat i'm gonna show you a cheating technique cheating technique if that's proper way of describing this i'm gonna take my mop brush and i want that same nice lucy effect so i'm gonna get some of that red ochre and i'm just gonna add a stroke here and oops that's a mistake but i like how it looks so we're gonna run with it okay <laughs> so i'm gonna do one of my strokes here and dipping the tip in water i'm gonna do another stroke here and then do the leaf and look at that nice orangey blend love it did a second stroke to complete that leaf now i'm dipping the tip in water again and ever so lightly touching that area, I'm doing another leaf. And then I'm just using the same water that's there and having myself do a couple of additional strokes. And then it's going from dark to light. And I like how that looks, so I'm just going to leave it that way. At this point, if you want to introduce some of your green, you can absolutely do that. I think it'll give you a really nice effect. And I am going to add a little bit of green. Let's just add one here, a stroke here. I want, it, I want it to touch this leaf, so I missed it. There we go, touched it. And get some water to kind of blend out that green a little bit so it's not too stark. And then I'll just do another stroke here. Sometimes these strokes are loose, guys, but sometimes you need to be a little more intentional, like... I'm being a little too careless with my strokes. I need to be a little more intentional, especially if there's a certain kind of shape I'm looking to get. Like I wanted this leaf to be kind of turning that way. So I needed to be very intentional to make sure that my tip was this way and then pressing down as opposed to just going up because then it would just be a leaf going up. So I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna get some more of that green. I know by now I think some of this area might be also dried up, but we're gonna try and see if I can get something happening here. Oops, that's the sepia, not the green. And then just maybe a little bit of a stroke here and there. But you don't have to have them happening all over the place. It was just something I wanted to do, so I figured I would do it. Now, since everything is uh, still damp and can give us that effect that we're looking for. Okay, so We've got this happening here. I think we can have some greenery happening on this end too. So again, do we like this flowy effect? Should I do my cheating technique here and do the flowy effect? Let me know in the chat, guys, and I will continue. Oh, Joanne's watching this on her 65-inch TV. How nice. I love it. You know what? I've Joanne, it's you are the second person who's told me you watch my videos on TV, and I've just thought that's such a fabulous idea like why wouldn't anybody watch it full screen just to kind of get more detail 
Uh, hey, Jill, welcome. I was just telling everyone how you said you weren't able to make it and you're here. I'm glad. Hi, Laura. Okay, awesome. Laura is loving the flowy. So I'm assuming we'll go with that. Laura is also saying, uh, oh, Laura, I like that indigo blue peacock blue with sepia. Good choices. So you have that nice pop and then you have a nice um, nude to kind of tone it down or a natural color uh thanks christine okay awesome so i'm gonna do that technique that i was talking about and let's flow with that guys all right so getting my brush ready i'm gonna get some of the what color should i get this time yeah we're just gonna get the muted red ochre and i'm just gonna do a stroke here in fact you don't even have to get color you can just get water to be very honest i think unless you want that effect of color blending in with color as opposed to just one color being smooth or not smooth sorry flowy so we'll do some uh, leaves here on this end I'll do a stem this way there we go we have that one blend I had some green on here that's why it's looking like a mixture of green and sepia but I like that so I'm gonna continue with that and I don't know if any of you guys are fans of the resin artwork. Um, people do a lot of, or alcohol, is it alcohol inks, I think, where everything kind of just flows. And then normally people take like three really bright colors and then they'll take a black. And then you'll see the whole, um, how the black enhances the bright colors. That's typically what I'm trying to do here. Um, getting some dark colors to kind of really enhance the brightness of everything and then also the white space to kind of help enhance things. I'm just taking some of the um, sepia and I'm going to add a line. Sorry, this is a green, not sepia. Green, I'm just going to add a line down here so that it gives me that nice blend with everything I have going on. And I'll just do a leaf coming out this way. And you see how it's like not, um, I just did like a flowy move to give it some, oh, I, I want to say dance, give it some movement, but it didn't quite fully extend. You can see some white in between here. And I like that because again, it gives you that whole abstract feeling like there was, I guess the belly of my brush was a little bit dry, didn't have a lot of water, mainly on the tips because you can see it started off bright didn't quite go as well and then ended off quite um, strong as well so I like that I'm gonna leave that in that way and uh, I'll just like make the edges to be really dotty and loose just like that and then maybe even like suggested leaves happening and you're just letting it fade off. So something like that. And I have a little bit of green left on here. So I'm just going to add a couple of strokes like this very lightly. And what this does here is we've got a whole bunch of dark happening. We have lots of strokes to give it nice texture but now i'm going in and adding loose um sorry not loose very light strokes here because now it's giving you that whole indication of like there's a whole bunch of leaves happening and they're quite all over the place and you can't quite get direction of what is placed where so again that whole abstract look uh, but you know there's a lot happening here so you don't have to kind of focus on it so i hope that made sense i hope that made sense to you guys my explanation uh, now we're going to continue and create uh, some what did I use so I've used all the colors here but I think we can still kind of go ahead and create some additional um, some additional uh, what's it called like lighter uh, florals possibly around here and for that, I will use, let's use the mop. 
Now be careful with the mop because you don't want these florals to be as big as these two. Um, so I'm getting up most of the water and then I'm just going to get some of my red ochre, which is right here. And mix it in there so I've got a bit happening. And I'm going to keep that there. Now I want to make sure that my strokes for this floral or these florals are going to be very light. And then we'll go in uh, with a darker version of this hue to kind of enhance it. And so let me just make sure I have. Everything is good. Okay. So I'm going to start off by doing a couple of very rough, jaggedy strokes in a circular motion, fashion, shape. Yes, <laughs> let's do that. So I'm just doing this. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I want to go in with my number four and I'm going to get some of my sepia. And I'm just going to go to the center and just add a couple of strokes so that it gives us a nice bleed. But I want to leave as much white space in between so that the flare is literally between the center and the beginning of that petal, I guess you could say. And then I'm going to go back in and do not that. That's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> I wanted to do another floral, but I was trying to fix that really quickly uh, and it didn't quite work out. So I'll do another floral here one here and this one can just be like facing upward so one stroke two strokes three strokes and very very loose and open that way so you can literally like it's almost like a faint faint floral hint of a floral and then i'm just gonna add a couple of strokes there and then we're just gonna add a stroke like this so it looks like it's a petal on the back in the background i hope that makes sense to you guys and you can see what i'm trying to show you perfect so that's that i'm gonna get some of that green now and just add it to the bottom of this so you can see that it is a flower that's kind of pointing upward and i'm just adding a bit of green to kind of have it seep into this uh, red ochre that we have going on and then I will add I'm not going to add any more greenery up here because we have some here, but I will add a little bit of a hint here. And again, I'm having it seep into these petals that are right there. And now your petals, you might be able to see your petals very clearly. But here's another technique you can use to kind of really make the light florals pop. Uh, what I do is I'm literally going to do a leaf here, for instance, and I am going to give it an outline as if it is peeking out from under the petals. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So while this is loose and abstract, you're also kind of giving it some shape intentional shape and then I'm just going to get some of that sepia and have some other like flor uh, leaves kind of just popping out and just adding dabs of color literally at this point and blending in nicely I'll do some over here And the leaves don't even have to attach to any kind of, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Stem. You can literally just have it in a trail like that and just taper off. And 
and just you know you can have the bigger leaves down and then the smaller as you kind of go higher and then just leave it that way uh, I want these to be a lot lighter though so I'm just gonna take my paper towel and just dab that off oh some purple came on there that's okay because it's kind of all like a mishmash of colors and I kind of like that look so Maybe you can actually get some purple and actually dab on the painting. That might be a good idea. Actually, yeah. All right, so we have that. And I think I'm going to add uh, some very, very loose looking berries. That's going to be pretty much like a combination of the green and the and the sepia. And let's just make it uh, something that just looks like this. So you're just doing a very loose line and then you're just adding bunch of shapes dipping the tip in water uh, getting some more color and then you're just kind of tapering off as you go to the edge maybe you can have extended ones and you're just like doing very haphazard dotted strokes and then I got some water and I'm then adding like more watery strokes in that same fashion so now it's giving me nice gradient of colors, but then also like a very interesting texture and a very loose kind of feel to it. So now I'm getting just the tip of it has a little bit more of the sepia because I want certain areas to be highlighted slightly more. So that's a little bit too dry. So I'm just getting a little bit more water and then just leave it at that. You can do that same rendition, possibly just have some here, I guess, on this side. Just a very tiny hint of it, so it doesn't look isolated and like one of a kind happening just there. And I'm just using water too smoothen out the dots so this is very similar what i'm doing right here is very similar to what i had done in the uh watercolor my watercolor beginner series uh a belief filler florals um we had used like a version of blue and pink and then kind of just spread it out this way so this is very similar to that technique so i would use um that video as a reference if you didn't feel like i did a good enough job explaining what i was trying to do here um right so we have that floral happening and you know i like to do my stuff in threes so i'm just going to do very light blends happening here just taking out some excess water and then just getting some of that green Adding it very lightly to the bottom. And maybe a little bit of that sepia as well to kind of blend in so it doesn't look... So it blends in with everything that we have happening here. And then you can just leave it at that. Um, let's see. I think this looks fairly good. We haven't quite given it a good enough shape. So I think what I'll do is I'll do one last floral. Not quite in this kind of manner, but over here. To kind of do the whole three um close up our trio of things yes because we only have twos we, we need to have a three guys we need to have a third for sure so this one let's do kind of very similar to the to the one that i had uh right there but i'll try and do a better job compared to that so we're gonna try and leave a lot of white space and um, thicker strokes. So using my number one mop, I'm going to get some of the, I'm not going to use pink because this is, this is quite dominant here. Um, I am going to use, let's mix some of that sepia into this red ochre and see what we get
Because maybe this could be one of those muted big blooms. I'm going to get a little bit more of that, mix it in here so that it's not... Because I want to get a different color so it doesn't look too... So I'm mixing the two colors that we already have on here to create something different. So let's see if that works. So, um, so for this, we're going to have this floral kind of facing downward. And I'm going to create it um, using strokes that are like, um, how, how do I explain this? Um, so we're going to start off with the edge like this. So comma strokes. And we're trying to, okay, so clearly this area of my paper is not doing too well. That's why it's giving me this kind of marbly kind of look. But hopefully your yours is doing better. Uh, and I want to just have it going around this way. And I'm leaving that white space there ever so slightly so I can see what happens with this floral as we go in. So if you have followed any of my other floral videos, you'll know that I always start off with what I call the inner cup of the flower. So this is what this is here. That's what we're trying to do here. Give it that inner cup kind of look. And then the, these are the background florals. Uh, sorry, not florals, petals. And the background, I want it to be extremely muted. So I'm just washing off most of the color. And I'm just blending in the color so it doesn't look too intense. And now I'm going to go in and get some of that sepia a little bit. And then I'm just going to add it to the edge, the bottom of that floral. This is too dark, so I'm just getting more water on here and blending it out. Okay, so this part of my paper is not doing too well. And I'm not able to quite get it as well, but I'm hoping yours is. And I'm just going to get a little bit of that happening in these areas here as well. And then just a bit on this side. And smooth it out so that it doesn't look as intense as the ones that are closest to the center there. And then I'm going to get some of that red ochre. And I am going to add a little bit of a center... Uh, what's this, what would you call this, like linear lines that are just kind of in a very, uh, creating like an oval shape in the center. If you're not quite sure what I mean, like just wait for me to finish and then you can kind of continue and do that. So just like this, so I started off with lines and then I closed it off by just doing like tiny dots around. And then I'm just going to get a little bit of that sepia and add that to some of these strokes here in hopes that it'll blend in with that color give it a little bit more texture and I guess detail if you want to call it that Perfect. And then I don't want to do anything more outside of maybe just adding something like a little bit of a line perhaps at the like maybe just like one stroke at the end over here. I'm going to go ahead and do that because I want it to look right now it just looks like an incomplete floral. And I want it to look complete. However, we do have leaves here. So this I might completely botch this up. I'm warning you right now. But I desperately want to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. And we'll just see how that turns out. Too dark. So I'm washing off some color. And dabbing off some water. And I'm just going to add 
a spread of color very abstract almost there's no real shape but I'm just trying to cover that area up by adding a little bit of like dotted um, strokes no dots using my brush to get that effect because it's literally the 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 petals that are downward is what I was trying to emulate here and then I'm just going to make sure that these are good to give us that nice fluffy look and I kind of like how this has turned out um, so you get that idea of where the floral is you can even enhance these outer outer ones if you want to but I like how this is kind of closed up that open gap and you can see that it's a nice full floral it's actually quite pretty but this would like these are typically my idea of negative space florals so you don't need a lot of detail it's very loose strokes you can even reference a real image and kind of come back and try and emulate uh, the light the white areas that we have here can be the lightest part of the flower the dark areas are the ones uh, that are in shadow and then the medium colored ones are the ones that are the regular color because there's always like three tones when you look at a picture like you'll see shadow you'll see light and then you'll see what it's supposed to look like in regular so I hope that kind of makes sense to you guys my explanation of that um yes yeah, so this is it I'm gonna read the comments really quickly to see if people have any questions or comments about what's done uh Oh, Tammy, you do resin art as mixed media artists. Oh, I'm sure that's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm scrolling up um, so that I can see everyone's comments. Okay, so we started with Christine saying she's going to definitely rewatch this and follow along. Yes, I know some... Um, if you guys found this hard, definitely give it another shot, you know, do the replay and do it again. Um, because sometimes it's kind of hard to explain when something is abstract and what you do might be entirely different from, you know, what I'm doing and displaying. Because uh, it's all about pressure in your brush strokes and how you mix color and whatnot. Uh, Jill is not painting. Eyes are too blurry. Sorry, Jill. Yeah, definitely watch it later. Nancy, for the first time I have a horrible mess. Oh, I feel bad, Nancy. Try it again. I know I, I was explaining as I was going along and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like, I hope I'm not botching up the explanation. <laughs> it's kind of hard, like I said, because it's abstract. Um, yes, Alva, you know what? That totally makes sense. Watch the live stream so you get a feel of like where I'm headed and then do the replay to kind of follow along. Totally makes sense. Uh, Joanne's asking, could you do a tutorial uh, sometime on the different strokes you use in creating your roses and other abstract florals, I'm assuming. Um, yes, abstract florals. And of course, with the different brushes you use, that would help me and maybe others too. Um, yes, Joanne, for sure. Uh, although I've recently started doing tutorials like that so like this week we focused on the difference between using your um your radiance versus your regular and then uh, last week I had done the video on the mop versus the round um so you know what but I could I could probably do a little more focused series on uh, strokes like that for florals specifically uh, good suggestion. I'll definitely keep that in mind. Thanks, Joanne. Uh, Susan, your work is beautiful. Can you give us a tour of your personal art books or previous work? Uh, Susan, absolutely. I'm going to have to plan for that as well, and I can totally do that. Maybe I'll do that as another live or maybe even a video. Let's see. Um, Rita, you are so talented. However, would love to see your work really shine using cotton watercolor paper. I can't even imagine how gorgeous your work would actually look when it is so gorgeous already. Rita, thank you. You're too kind. Um, my main reason, 
uh, for doing it on Canson like regular watercolor paper. When I say regular, I mean like the economical version of it is because um, I just find a lot of people who watch me are people who are um, dominantly just starting out and because if it's like a starting out session and they're kind of practicing or learning something, using 100% cotton is kind of expensive or can get expensive. So I kind of keep it simple and I just do with the basics. But yes, for sure, I think I should have thrown in a couple of sessions where I am focusing on using arches or um, something along those lines. And then this way people can see how different things look. That's a great idea. Lots of Lots of great ideas, guys. Thanks. Uh, Brittany, this is so pretty. I love the different color combos. I can't wait to paint along. Yes, guys, honestly, please uh, try it. And if you feel like you failed this time, try it again. And please send me the work. I would love to see what you guys are doing. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask because I'm so happy to kind of engage and just answer any queries you may have. Um, Smitha, it's so beautiful, especially your first peony. You are so paid patient but trying different shades and tones thanks Mitha. although i i feel like patience is a virtue i sometimes lack but thank you anisha pretty jonathan uh what are the strem rulers i'm not quite sure i follow the question sorry can anyone enhance or if jonathan is here maybe he can ask re respond to that uh Maggie May, are you going to post the entire video? I'd like to watch from the beginning. Maggie, yes, this video will be posted uh, once the live is finished and you will be able to watch it anytime. So this will be the whole video. Um, thanks, Maggie. Okay, so I think, oh wait, I think there's questions. This is super gorgeous. The colors are bomb. Could you please do a tutorial of your latest Insta story? The one you did a full page of florals. Shazia, if you are talking about this one, this is a last Sunday's live. So if you just um, look in the videos, you should be able to find this in last Sunday's live. The um, the what you see in my Instagram stories is me just kind of going in and highlighting some of the areas and perfecting what I already did from last Sunday. So if you want the whole thing, you can definitely catch it there. And also what I was doing in the video, uh, you'll see um, in last Sunday's live that I'm explaining what it is um, or how to get that effect. This layering effect is what I call it. Uh, yeah, and we did that for Valentine's Day. That was quite fun for me and I think everybody who was there. That's what I've heard anyways. Thanks, Deborah. Uh, Kathy, you're welcome. What, uh, Jonathan Booster, what are the stream rules? Arches rough would be so pretty with this abstract style. Yes, it would be. Jonathan, I think, uh, I'm not, I, I honestly don't know what you mean by stream rules. Are you talking about streaming for YouTube rules or I'm not quite sure. Sorry, I, I need a little more backup as to what you mean by that. Uh... Claire's, could you tell me some combination of colors we could get with the basic 12 colors, just a few at least? Yes, yeah, Smitha, if you watch any of my videos, uh, I try to do a lot of mixing because I never use just one color by itself. I like to use two or three. It, I feel it just enhances the floral and makes it like next level pretty, in my opinion. Um, so you should watch some of the videos and I think you will get an idea. But... Um, but uh, having a video on just mixing colors to get other colors might also be a good suggestion. So I will definitely keep that in mind. Uh, all right. Uh, right, so Christine's asking where I got the shell. I know I get this question all the time. This is an actual shell that we got when we were on vacation. It was gifted to my daughter by a retired salesman, not salesman. Sailor. Sailor is what I was trying to say. And uh, I just ended up taking it and using it for my painting sessions. And I like it way better than my massively huge um, 
palette that I have here. I don't know why. I think this fits well in the grand scheme of things for video. You guys are able to see me mix. That's a little bit awkward and massive, so I don't use it as much. But I guess when I'm painting by myself without recording, I do use that. Um, you're welcome, uh, Martin. I'm glad you guys had fun with this in the session. Uh, I think this, uh, I think I'll wrap this session up. Oh, actually, uh, just one more comment. For those of you who were there last week and had seen um, the giveaway that I was doing with Alicia from Lisi Arts, she is, she has taken a lot of your requests and she's made a beautiful shell uh, resin, I guess, shaped container. And it's posted in my story, so check it out. What I like about her resin um, shell container that she's made is um, it's got ridges. And I think you can actually mix color in the ridges and you could use it as a palette. It would work stunningly and it's so pretty. So you should definitely check it out. It's in my stories. And when I get one, I will definitely be showing you guys that as well. Uh, the back side of the shell, it's got water on it right now, but I can just wash, like wipe this off and show it to you. That's what the shell looks like on the back. Nothing that pretty, but yeah, it's an actual shell, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So as I was saying about, uh, Lisi Arts and doing this amazing shell rendition, you guys should definitely, if you like the shell idea, you should definitely follow her. Um, check out my stories on Instagram, which is my handle is hello Clarice G and you will see the stories follow her. Uh, if you want to place an order, you can place an order with her directly. Um, I can't wait to get mine and see how that flows and goes. I'm going to switch the camera back so you guys can see me and, uh, my hot mess of a hair. <laughs> and, uh, I just wanted to say, uh, a heartfelt goodbye to you guys. Hopefully you have an amazing Sunday. Uh, I want to see your work. And so feel free to send that to me on Instagram or Facebook. And then also, um, if you have questions, like I said, I know this is not the easiest thing in the world to do because it's abstract. And sometimes I think the whole idea of letting loose and going with the flow is not always easy because we're so trained to do things in a certain way. And here's the right way, here's the wrong way. And then all of a sudden you do this technique and you're like, there is no right or wrong way. You kind of just go with the flow. It can be hard. I totally get it. So feel free to send in your questions, send in your comments. Um, please subscribe if you've liked this video uh, and do share it as well. It really helps my channel grow and I can enhance on doing uh, 